This is KGW News at Sunrise. Classes are expected to resume at Portland State this morning after three days of cancellations, all stemming from a nearly week-long protest on campus. Devin Haskins will join us live from PSU in just a minute to recap Thursday's dramatic events as police arrested more than two dozen people. And with the Oregon primary just a few weeks away, KGW hosted the final debate in the race for Multnomah County District Attorney. We'll have some of the highlights from last night's debate between current DA Mike Schmidt and his challenger, Senior Deputy DA Nathan Vasquez in just a few minutes. And we're also talking timbers and thorns this morning. Actually, in this case, it's timbers versus thorns. Hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> the two teams will face off next month in a competitive effort to help the environment. We'll let you know how you can get tickets to the charity match coming up. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Lots to get to this morning, but I am so excited. We are at Friday. <laughs> yes. Now, if you have plans this weekend, Mr. Common Cool here. Yeah. The rain probably does not <laughs> stop until some point late Saturday, and then we have plenty of showers on Sunday. So people have been stopping me going, Rod, Rod, well, sometimes. Let me ask you something. Yes, sir. Weatherman, yeah. what's better, a rainy Saturday yeah. or a sunny Wednesday? Hmm. I'm going to go with the sunny Wednesday. <laughs> okay. All right. Had you thinking there for a second, though. <laughs> All right. I mean, I've been preaching we need the rain. The rain has been fantastic, uh, but it is. I like to play golf, too. So here we go. We've got rain uh, approaching the coast. We've got partly cloudy skies over the city. Actually, we have cloudiness increasing coming in from the west. You can see the brightness looking off to the east. We're at 47 degrees. So the update this morning is absolutely still dry at noon. 59, maybe 60 overcast. And then the rain comes in around 2 p.m. And then again, once it starts, it doesn't stop until we get well through much of the day tomorrow. Uh, another advisory up for snow in the Cascades. They've had a lot in the last handful of weeks, and we'll talk about that coming up in my complete forecast. All right, Rob, we appreciate that update this morning. Top story now, Portland State University says classes will resume today after police cleared the school's main library of protesters two different times yesterday. The campus, of course, has been closed since Tuesday. Right, so here on Sunrise, if you recall, we were live for seven hours showing you in real time what was happening at PSU as police cleared the library and made arrests. KGW's Devin Haskins is live on campus this morning, and Devin, you were live out there for many hours yesterday, saw things escalate. How are things looking now? Yeah. yeah, things are a lot different from what they were even just 24 hours ago or 20, 20 hours ago uh, when that uh, police eviction basically uh, had just started. So this morning, park is quiet. Right now there's a chain link fence covering the front of the, uh, the library. There's two police cars stationed at uh, either end of the library right now. And a lot has changed. So the front steps uh, of the library have been all cleared. We saw crews cleaning out those yesterday. We know that police made 30 arrests and they say seven of those were PSU students. We wanna show you some video that officers, uh, that show officers going into the library a second time. So they cleared it the first time. Protesters then went back in a second time yesterday evening. The group had torn down a fence. PSU had put up and went back inside. Those arrested were charged with second degree trespass and burglary. We know that yesterday evening, eight people of the 30 that were totally total arrested, uh, eight of those were arrested yesterday evening. Now, a second piece of video, we also got a closer look at the damage inside. You can see extensive damage at every turn, such as walls completely covered in graffiti. We also saw the extent in which protesters went to barricade the doors with tables and chairs, and also the, the scale of the supplies that were brought in, everything from food and water to first aid supplies. Earlier in the day at a press conference, Mayor Ted Wheeler bluntly addressing the protesters about vandalizing businesses on Wednesday and the library occupation throughout the week. If you believe that by damaging a business, which frankly harms the frontline employees who work in those businesses, and we've had reports that they were frightened, that they were traumatized. If you believe damaging those businesses or trashing a library on a university campus will impact events in the Middle East, then you are delusional. All right, so again, Portland police saying they arrested 30 people yesterday. Seven of those are PSU students. The question now is, is will PSU take action and discipline those students? So far, a PSU spokesman says that's too early to tell. Or to, uh, to, to tell. As of right now, campus set to reopen this morning. They also say that could change. Uh, keep updated to, the, to your email if you're a student here or social media. Back to you. 
Devin, thank you for your reporting over the last several days. Okay, so during the events on the PSU campus park blocks, a scary scene also unfolded yesterday when a car drove onto campus and protesters thought the driver was trying to run them over. As Catherine Cook reports, in the end, it was the driver who ran away. Like a pro-Palestine monument, the white Toyota Camry sat, ditched between two buildings at Portland State. Windshields bashed, spray painted and abandoned after a terrifying moment on campus Thursday afternoon. Cell phone video shows the driver rolling into a crowd of protesters who'd gathered here. Like about like 20 feet into there, he flashed a, the pepper spray can. You can see the driver spraying people in the crowd, some mistaking the can for a gun. It was a really um, scary moment. At one point, witnesses say a protester intervened, breaking a window to go after the driver. It's so crazy to see this happen. Whoever did that is, is a hero. Seconds later, the driver jumps out of the car and runs away. No one was seriously hurt, but a lot of students got hit with pepper spray, including Naya Williams and Mila Robertson. The whole area was just affected with mace, and there were people um, you know, screaming for help and running this way, you know, with just tears in their eyes and just coughing, and it was awful. Campus police found the driver, took him into custody, and transported him to a local hospital on a police mental health hold. This has been mostly just a peaceful day of people just expressing their views, and so that was pretty stark and shocking. Michelle Illuminata was one of several PSU professors who joined students on campus Thursday after police cleared the library of trespassing protesters. Professor Sarah Wolf Newlands was also there. I want to support students in their ability to um, peacefully protest. Wolf says she's heartbroken by the damage done to the library, but that's not the extent of her feelings. I wish it didn't happen there, but I also recognize that we're sharing a message to the rest of the world. Some students, like Alex and Crystal, take that sentiment a step further. This damage, I don't think, I don't think it, it really like matches up to what's actually going on and why we're fighting. I think this damage is okay. Catherine Cook, KGW News. We'll have more coverage of the protests at Portland State throughout the morning here on Sunrise. You can also follow new developments on KGW.com, our news app, and our social media pages. This morning, Portland's police are looking for a five-year-old who they think may have been kidnapped by strangers. This is Travion Lewis. He was last seen riding buses on Southeast Division Street with two unknown adults. Take a look at these photos taken from bus surveillance. They show Travion wearing a brightly colored champion hoodie. We also have photos of the two people Travion was apparently last seen with. Police say the two were seen pulling a red wagon. There you see them pushing and also pushing a black wheelchair. Police are focusing their search in the area of Southeast Division between 122nd and 162nd Avenue. If you see Travion or think you might know where he is, call 911. Later today, Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler is expected to release his full budget proposal for the next fiscal year, which starts up on July 1st. We got a preview of the budget proposal during a virtual news conference yesterday. The mayor is proposing a 5% cut from all general fund programs, with three exceptions for public safety. Those exceptions are Portland Fire and Rescue, the Portland Police Department, and the Bureau of Emergency Communications. The mayor described his budget as balanced, but says it also leaves room to continue addressing problems like homelessness and the drug crisis. Of course, we'll update you with all the details when Mayor Wheeler releases his full proposal later today. The Portland Thorns and Portland Timbers are joining forces to host a charity match next month. It's dubbed the Green is Gold Charity Match. The two clubs will play a mixed teams scrimmage to benefit environmental nonprofits, the Nature Conservancy, and Keep Oregon Green. The match is scheduled for June 26th at Providence Park. And guess what? It's free to go. Hmm. Yeah, cool hmm. stuff. But <laughs> fans are encouraged to make a donation. You can get tickets online starting this morning at 10 a.m. It's always curious when you have a free fundraiser. How do you <laughs> raise funds? That's what I thought. And the price is nothing. But uh, we do that for free cone day, too, down with uh, New Avenues mm -hmm. for Youth at Ben yeah. Jerry's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cones are free, but we encourage donations. Yeah. Yep. So same situation here with the Timbers and Thorns game. Expect they'll have a sellout. Well, wouldn't you think that place would be pretty full? Do you call the sellout? Well, you can't you're not selling tickets? Yeah, yeah. But I would expect a full, <laughs> full house. Full house, yeah. yeah.
All right, let's get you going with the weather. Uh, the update this morning is all dry through the noon hour in Portland. That's high confidence call. Rain coming in around 2 o'clock or so. Radar's picking it up offshore. I do want to talk about the mountain. Still mounds of shoveled snow at the parking lot up at Timberline. 33 degrees right now. So get this. You go back to April 13th, a little bit more than two weeks ago. 43 inches of snow have fallen up at Timberline. That's a lot for late season. Now, here's the update for the weekend. Tonight, mostly rain, a wet mix. Right about tomorrow morning is when the snow, early in the morning is when the snow levels lower to 4,000 feet. So it's been mainly wet snow at Timberline tonight. Then the, any rain at Government Camp changes the snow in the morning. Pass level accumulations for the weekend, six to 10 inches. So it will get worse and worse up there. Well, it's easy for me to say it'll get worse and worse for travelers on Saturday, but at the flip side, temperatures might hang out close to freezing. If that's the case, ODOT would keep the road in pretty good shape. So that's, just make sure you check conditions. But to get up to 5,000 feet and higher, meadows and timberline bases, 12 to 20 inches of snow expected. Again, that's a lot. That's a good snowstorm for early May. All right, temperatures outside right now, 39 in Newport, 43 in Salem. We are all dry, 40 in the Dallas, 20. Six in Burns, 32 in Baker City, 11 o'clock. This shows that two day, what I'm calling a two day rain event hitting the coast. Here it is at two o'clock, starting to move into the valley. And again, once it starts, it doesn't stop. Widespread, steady rain the rest of today, all of tonight. Raining when we get up tomorrow morning. Here's the snow in the Cascades in blue. Here's the rain breaking up somewhat later in the day along the coast, but I really feel. A, I feel like this may be showing too much of a break in the rain, and B, I, I feel like the rain will be continuing much of the day in Salem and Portland and Vancouver. Now, you get into Sunday, the big two-day rain events moving out, and we will get back into scattered showers of decreasing snow showers in the Cascades, which is what this shows Sunday at 4 p.m. How much rain are we talking about? Latest numbers give us an inch and a half, an inch and six tenths uh, from the coast to the valley. I feel like the beaches may get some spots picking up over two inches. Hefty amounts of a half of an inch or more all the way to the Idaho border. So that's a good, impressive uh, haul of moisture coming in. This shows you the snow. This is one model showing 16 inches falling up on Mount Hood. Seven day forecast showers on Sunday, a drier day. Rain picks up Monday, sun and showers Tuesday. Wednesday's uh, day one of what looks to be at least four days in a row of sunny, warming weather. We'll be back in a moment.